A brazen Ukrainian military offensive into Russia's Kursk region has seen the Ukrainian armed forces seize dozens of villages, take hundreds of prisoners and force tens of thousands of civilians to evacuate. It was the largest attack on the country since World War II. As the Associated Press writes, after more than a week of fighting, Russian troops are still trying to push out the Ukrainians, but Russia turned out to be completely unprepared. Russia's Kursk, Bryansk and Belgorod regions share a 1,160-kilometer border with Ukraine, including 245 kilometers in Kursk. That border had only token defenses before Moscow invaded Ukraine in 2022. It has since been reinforced with checkpoints on key roads and occasional field fortifications, but building a solid defense remains a challenge. Russia's most capable units are fighting in eastern Ukraine, where they have been advancing in several areas, making gradual but steady gains. Moscow has used these regions to launch airstrikes and missile strikes into Ukraine, but lacks sufficient ground forces there. Due to the border's capacity and lack of manpower, shadowy groups of pro-Kiev special forces previously carried out raids on Belgorod and Bryansk. Russian drones, surveillance equipment and intelligence assets have been massed in eastern Ukraine, helping Kiev secretly amass troops near the border under the cover of dense forests. Retired General Andriy Gurulev, a member of Russia's lower house of parliament, criticized the military for failing to protect the border. Unfortunately, the group of forces guarding the border did not have their own intelligence assets. Nobody likes to see the truth in reports. Everyone just wants to hear that everything is fine, he said. Russian military commanders initially relied on warplanes and helicopters to try to stem the onslaught. At least one Russian attack helicopter was shot down and another damaged. At the same time, Moscow began to pull in reinforcements, which managed to slow down Ukraine's advance, but was unable to completely block the Ukrainian maneuver due to the vast forests. Russia seems to do quite poorly when it has to react dynamically to this kind of situation. Russian forces do much better when they operate with prepared defenses, fixed lines, more of a positional war, said military analyst Michael Kaufman of the Carnegie Endowment. Kaufman noted that the Russian reserves that arrived in the Kursk area seemed to have no combat experience and had problems coordinating with each other. In one case, a military convoy carelessly parked on the side of the road near a combat zone shortly after the invasion began and was quickly hit by the Ukrainian missiles. This is a mistake that Russian troops on the line of control do not usually make, Kaufman noted. Russia is withdrawing some of its troops from Ukraine in response to the Ukrainian offensive in the Kursk region. The Wall Street Journal writes about this, citing sources among American officials. It is noted that these actions indicate that the Ukrainian armed forces raid into the Kursk region has provoked a forced regrouping of Russian forces. The publication's interlocutors noted that the U.S. is still trying to determine the significance of this step by Russia and did not specify how many troops Russia is transferring from the Ukrainian front to Kursk. His assessment confirms the statements of Ukrainian officials that the surprise operation in the Kursk region diverted Russian troops from Ukraine. Meanwhile, Politico Europe also reported, citing an official in Kiev, that a relatively small number of Russian troops had been withdrawn to respond to the incursion into the Kursk region. U.S. officials told the magazine that it was still unclear how many troops Russia was pulling out of Ukraine. Against the backdrop of the Ukrainian operation in the Kursk region, the Russian Federation has begun to withdraw units from Ukraine. In addition, the demilitarization of Kaliningrad has begun, reported Lithuanian National Defense Minister Lorinas Kasyunas. The minister added that the next good sign from the partners would be permission to use long-range weapons on the territory of the Russian Federation. He emphasized that his country is lobbying for this among Western countries. Earlier, the representative of the Ukrainian operational group of troops, Tavria, Dmitro Lykova told that Russia withdrew a small part of the troops from the temporarily occupied regions of Zaporizhia and Kherson regions against the background of fighting in the Kursk region. Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, Oleksandr Sirsky, reported to President Volodymyr Zelensky that 74 settlements in the Kursk region are now under Ukrainian control. As Suspiln writes, 
The advance of Ukrainian troops in the territory of the Kursk region of the Russian Federation is complicated by resistance in the direction of the regional center. According to sources among the military participating in the Kursk operation, the defense forces will dig in at some borders. To try to counter Ukrainian gains, Russian troops have, however, continued their offensive on Pokrovsk and elsewhere in Ukraine's Donetsk region, according to the general staff of the Ukrainian army in one of the hottest spots on the war front where Russia is gaining ground. As Ukraine captured territory, Russian commanders initially played down the assault, insisting the military had things under control. But more than a week later, Ukraine now controls at least 1,000 square kilometers of Russian territory.